Well, good afternoon. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, my name is Andy Quintana. I am an instructional technology specialist with the professional learning and tech research uh, team here at uh, SDCOE. We're part of um, the innovation division. Uh, with me today, uh, moderating and co-hosting is Leo Cole. She's also uh, part of the innovation division. Um, so she'll be keeping an eye on the chat and uh, and uh, be in our right hand through this. Um, so um, thank you all for joining. Um, hopefully uh, this will give you uh, some good information, some good starting points, uh, some tips and tricks. Um, I want to uh, basically get through as much of the information, the me talking to you uh, part as, as quickly as possible, uh, but not too rushed, of course, uh, just enough so that you can have some discussion amongst yourselves and then also that you have time to ask questions. Um, so if you can just let us know in the chat, um, if you consider yourself uh, one of the three following options. Uh, you are a podcast enthusiast, meaning you haven't really participated in anything, but you're interested in seeing how uh, you can use this or how kids can use this. Uh, if you are a podcast participant, meaning you listen to podcasts, whether they're for entertainment, personal, professional, whatever, uh, or if you are a podcasting pro, meaning that you um, develop your own podcast, you host your own shows and all that stuff. Um, if everyone just kind of type that, either one, two, or three, or okay, so a lot of participants, enthusiasts, that's good. Awesome, participant semi pro. Uh, so, hopefully, uh, we can uh, provide information for everyone to either uh, feel like they're comfortable getting started, uh, and then also providing some, some tips and tricks for those who have who have already gotten their feet wet, so to speak. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my video and start screen sharing here. Um, so again, this is a, a 101 level um, type course or session. Um, I'm also, oops, I almost forgot to inform you that uh, we will be uh, recording these sessions. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start recording right now um, so that it can be archived later. Okay. Uh, so again, welcome to Podcasting 101. Um, so first thing is a little bit of a definition of what, uh, what we're doing. Uh, this is about conversation. So um, if you feel so inclined to uh, join in on the conversation. Uh, you feel free to follow San Diego County Office of Ed. Uh, you can follow me personally. Uh, and then our hashtags that we're using for today's event are Go Virtual CTE. Uh, and then you can also use that Innovate SD, which is uh, something that we just use to highlight innovation throughout the, the county. So first and foremost, uh, we want to define, or at least just getting uh, gain an understanding of what a podcast is. Uh, so a podcast is really just an audio program uh, that's available uh, in a digital format. So it's pretty accessible. It usually consists of episodes as part of a series. So think of anything episodic, any television show, anything that you you watch on Netflix, you know, there's some kind of topic, uh, plot point, subject matter, something, some kind of a theme. Uh, and then there are recurring episodes, uh, sometimes, you know, just a few of them. And sometimes there are tons and tons of episodes. Um, so that's essentially just what a podcast is. Uh, so this is audio. It is an audio recording. So we'll be talking about some ways to uh, record audio. Uh, that other thing that's integral is that you need to be able to have a place to hold or store that audio. Uh, those audio files uh, can get kind of cumbersome, especially if you're if you're doing this uh, in um, in more complex ways, like you're having different uh, different segments or or uh, just a bunch of files that you have to keep track of. Um, that's going to be key. Uh, having a site or a location. Basically, just a place that you can point uh, your listeners to. 
Uh, and so we're talking more in the general sense of podcasting. So uh, there are going to be some differences and some nuances um, from whether or not this is something that you are going to be creating. In other words, you are going to be putting content out there, whether it's for colleagues, whether it's for uh, just a general audience or whether it's for students um, versus something that you want you might want your students to use uh, as a way of creating content, maybe in a lesson, and uh, maybe just a different way of, of providing information for you. So we'll be talking generally, but also some, some things related to, to those situations. Um, and then uh, the last part is just a sort of a distribution or advertising. Again, this is going to depend on what the end goal of your podcast is going to be. Um, so if you are just using it to put information out there, then you're just simply informing your listeners or potential listeners where they can find uh, these episodes. And we'll be talking more about that um, versus if you're actually doing this on your own personal um, endeavors, uh, there are ways to advertise uh, just like anything else, just like any other product uh, to put that out there and to, to get listeners um, going. So uh, the first thing we want to get into is, uh, again, a podcast, first and foremost, is an audio recording. So you need to have uh, some kind of tool uh, that can be used to record audio. And this can be done very simply, um, quickly, and easily using tools that you're probably already familiar with. Um, or depending on your time and your comfortability, your skill level, this can be something uh, that you explore um, in more detail and more depth. Um, so a couple of tools I just uh, highlighted here, uh, and I'll demo a couple of these. Um, one is, I'll skip this first one for right now, but most of your phones, if they are uh, smartphones, so whether it's an iPhone or Samsung or, or um, Android, that's what I meant, um, they probably have a built-in voice recorder. Uh, so anything that can record sound, record audio, you know, it uses a built-in microphone. Um, that's usually a pretty easy way to record audio. And uh, I'll, I'll demo how you can, you know, get that audio someplace else. But usually it's just a built-in app and you speak into it, uses a microphone. So if you've got, um, you know, other people around, it will capture the whole, the whole room or car or whatever. Uh, it is that you're using that. And then uh, there's an easy way either to share that voice memo uh, as an audio file um, or to open that in another app that's on your phone. So a really simple tool, if you don't have access to any of those things, if you are um, able to access the internet. So this could be, uh, this is a really good tool uh, for students to use. Uh, it's a very uh, basic one. So I'm just going to Click on that link here. Uh, Vocaroo is just a very simple online voice recorder. Uh, so this works on anything that can get access to the internet. So Chromebooks, uh, PCs, um, tablets, iPads, anything. And it uses pretty much the, the whatever built-in uh, microphone that is on that computer. Um, or you know, if there's anything plugged into it. And a very simple interface. All you do is you just come to that. And you see the red button to hit record. Uh, you click on record. And it'll probably ask you if you haven't yet set that up to allow the microphone. Uh, and you can see it's just recording audio. So I can um, say whatever I need to say. I can make my talking points. Uh, I can pause as needed. Uh, and then restart. Uh, so this is a, a great way to to add some some simple production tools into this. Um, and then once you're done with that recording, you can press uh, stop. And so uh, what that does is that creates a. Um, let's see. I'm gonna click on. Make sure I'm sharing my uh, computer sound here. Yet set that up to allow the microphone. Uh, and you can see it's just recording. So as you can see, 
this is pretty basic, pretty simple. There's no login required. So uh, one of the um, one of the points to make sure that you're aware of is that once you create this recording, it's it, recording. It's kind of a one and done thing. So um, it will give you a link uh, and then some other ways to get to this file. Now, this is a, a unique link for this recording that we just did right now. So even though you don't log in, you don't save anything, as long as you have this link, you can always come back and find uh, this recording. Um, so in a very simple way, this could be your one and done uh, way of podcasting. You just uh, take these links as you as you generate them, as you make recordings, and then just post them anywhere else. Um, and then you can have a direct link to your episode. Um, you can also uh, share these through some of these other links. There's even a, a QR code generator that will give you uh, a link to that recording. And then you can download that. So you can see, um, hope you can see the bottom bar on my screen, uh, that it'll download this as an audio file. Um, so again, I can, I can use that file anywhere else. Um, we'll go into some different ways that you can share those files, but uh, essentially that's, that's pretty much it. Um, you have some uh, settings here. Um, you have a remove background noise setting that just uh, that just helps to take away some of the, the humming or the buzz because uh, a lot of times built in microphones, they're designed to capture everything. So um, if, for instance, you're in uh, in a room and it's unseasonably warm and you've got fans and who knows what else going on, you might want to use that. Uh, and that takes uh, helps to take some of the background noise out of that. Um, so the other thing that's nice about Vocaroo is that uh, not only can you record and generate um, audio files from here, uh, you see under the little um, avatar here, there's an upload button. So what that will do is that will allow you to upload an already existing audio file uh, that you may have stored on your computer. So let's say you have a recording, uh, something recorded from any other application. Uh, let's just say it, you know, it was recording it did a long time ago. Uh, maybe it's an old, old lesson, old content, an interview, or something like that. You can, uh, you can upload that. And let's see, let's see if it will allow me to upload this. Um, and what that will do is that will bring it into the website, and that will generate. Uh, not only an audio file here, but will give you all the links and a way to share that recording. So again, another quick, easy, one-stop shop way. If you've already got some files that you want to put out there, uh, you just upload them and get them, uh, get them their own link. Uh, and again, you've got all these all these other tools. Um, so. As you get more comfortable uh, with this, uh, there are some other tools that uh, will you can use to record audio. If you are uh, an Apple uh, user, for example, there's GarageBand, which is has tons of capabilities. Uh, if you're a PC user, there is uh, let's see, get my screen here. Uh, there's a free program that's been around for quite a while called uh, Audacity. And uh, I believe that's linked in the presentation that's attached to this, but I'll make sure you, you get all those links. Um, and this is a, has definitely way more bells and whistles. So if you want to really get into it and, and have a way to uh, manipulate and optimize uh, your audio as you're recording, um, you can download this free tool. And it's there are manuals and all kinds of uh, um, resources uh, to help because uh, if you've ever if you've never seen anything like this, it looks a little scary. Um, and there's a lot of buttons, and you, know, you might just want to like I don't want to touch anything. There's too many buttons. Uh, but once you get into it and and start uh, experimenting a little bit, there it's pretty easy to use. You just record your audio. It uses um, whatever devices you might have plugged in. And what this will do is it will, like I said, allow you a little more um, 
flexibility in terms of manipulating this audio. Um, sometimes if you don't have the best uh, microphone, uh, there are there are ways that you can uh, enhance that audio so you can make um, you can make that a little bit louder. You can uh, reduce noise a little bit more. Um, so that's just um, that's just a very quick overview of what Audacity does. Oops, let me get out of there. And I'll just pause right there for a second. Are there any uh, are there any questions that anyone has so far? Let me take a look at the chat here. All right. Well, feel free to add any questions that you want to the chat. Um, or there's uh, there's only about um, thirty or so. Oh, what? A, here's a question. What are the time limits on a recording? Um, for the two tools that I mentioned here, so for um, for Vocaroo, there isn't a <laughs> um, there isn't a set time limit. I mean, I've let it just testing it out. I've let it go on for about, you know, 20 or 30 minutes. Um, and um, it doesn't seem to be a time limit. Uh, just one thing to, um, to remember to think about, um, and we'll get into a little bit more about planning a podcast. Uh, but just like sort of with video, um, you don't want segments that are that are too long. Um, let me get back to this. Um, just for uh, attention span, but also um, as you're editing and as you're trying to to share these files, maybe across different platforms, the longer a recording is, the bigger the audio file is going to be. So that's going to just take longer to upload places, download places. Um, so um, a lot of times, you know, brevity, especially when you're just starting out, um, you want to try to to maybe do something that's I would say a good, you know, five to seven minutes is is usually a good, you know, overall uh, like good time for uh, attention span. And um, I see a, another question about the Anchor FM platform, and I will. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I'll be uh, getting into that a little bit more uh, later. That is a, that is a really um, fantastic platform. It's one that I use personally for. Um, for the podcast that I'm involved in. Um, so I will definitely go over that and make it a point, but I think that's a, that's a great uh, one-stop shop um, type of tool that, that really does a lot. Okay, so moving on here, let's see. Well, that doesn't look right. Let me stop my sharing screen sharing here for a little bit and try that again. Sorry about that. Okay, um, so uh, we just quickly went over a couple of tools. Again, anything that can record audio will work for this. So the next thing, once you have your audio file or your recording, um, you need a place to to host it, to to put that on there that you can direct your um, your students, your audience, whomever it is that you are um, creating this podcast for. And so there's a few different uh, there's a few different tools that you can use. Um, again. Anything uh, that is accessible on the web digitally. So if you already have an existing website or blog, um, that is totally fine. You know, however you want to organize that. You could have, uh, you know, a page that's just um, for your podcast and you could 
add in your links. Uh, you could add a little blurb in each one. I mean, there's there's a lot of things that you could you could do uh, with that. Any kind of digital portfolio. So any of the tools out there, uh, like maybe Seesaw or uh, Bulb, I think is another one. Um, any of these will will also work for that. You know, again, it's a, it's really just sort of based on what um, what your end result or your end goal for that is. Um, obviously, if you have a learning management system or platform like Google Classroom or Canvas or Schoology, um, that that is a good place to uh, either embed that content or or link to it. Uh, and then there are dedicated uh, podcast hosting sites. Um, again, uh, Anchor was brought up as one. Uh, Spreaker is also another one. Uh, these two are probably the most uh, popular and the most accessible, uh, but they are third-party uh, commercial sites, uh, meaning that they, they are in it for profit and also a lot of people that use it are in it for profit. So um, that's just sort of a caveat when using a tool to think about with students and just in education in general is just that a lot of times when you get into, um, into that, you sort of lose maybe the ability to um, manage student privacy and, and things of that nature because these will uh, be more public, um, publicly accessible sites. So again, if this is something that you want to do, especially with students, you might want, want to consider um, some of these in terms of, you know, how secure you want this to be, who you want to be able to, um, to access this. Um, so let's go back, actually. Um, I want to just I'll let you take a look at some of these uh, hosting sites. Um, so I mentioned some kind of a like a dashboard or um, a content management site. Uh, something that could work that I've seen um, other educators use is Padlet. Uh, if you're not familiar with Padlet, uh, Padlet just allows you to um, create a wall. Um, if you, well, let's see. I'll look at this one that we did for our happy hour. Uh, so it lets you uh, create a wall that can be publicly accessible and users can can upload uh, any kind of information to this. So it can just be a text posting, but you can also upload files. Uh, you can add links uh, or any other kind of, of media. Um, this tool also, again, allows you to record voice. It has a voice recording tool right here built into the platform. Um, so again, if you're using something like Vocaroo or, or Audacity or anything to create your audio files, you can easily upload them. Um, you can link to them. And then you can also just open the voice recorder. And that will allow you to, to record right here to that. So that's a good way of maybe um, creating a maybe a classroom podcast. Uh, if it's something that maybe you use as an assignment for student, uh, this would be a really a really good way, an effective way to allow them to publish it. Uh, but it also has enough um, enough security settings that you can uh, that you can restrict access to to who sees this. Um, so it just gives you a little bit more uh, control. Um, you do have the ability to add likes or comments that you can either moderate or turn off completely. Um, so that's good, especially if it's something that um, that you're concerned with, and that students sharing with that. Um, there's also another tool um, that I've used uh, called Wakelet, and Wakelet is a it's a resource aggregator. So you can create uh, what they call a Wakelet um, based on any topic, really. So it could be on a specific podcast in this example, or just podcasting in general. Um, but like the other tools, it allows you to uh, to add any other type of content that you want. Uh, so again, if you have uh, links to audio files that you've created, you can add them here and just link to them through that. Um, if you have anything that's stored in either Google Drive or OneDrive, um, you can add that um, 
directly into Wakelet. And this is something, again, that you can control privacy on. Um, and then you can share as needed. So you can invite collaborators um, and then use that to, to host and distribute your, your podcast. And just to kind of quickly go over um, what Anchor FM is. So Anchor is an all-in-one uh, tool. So uh, what Anchor does is it allows you to record and uh, really build and put together your podcast uh, episode by episode. Uh, and then it also sort of handles the hosting and the distribution. So it's, it's really just a one-stop shop uh, for for everything. And as you can see, this is a third party um, site. So a lot of, uh, a lot of um, private entities use this for their podcasting because, you know, it does have the monetization uh, sorts of things. So, you know, this is really easy to sort of manipulate you, you get your tools here and You have some different things that you can use. You can uh, record straight from your browser. Again, so if you have access to anything with the internet, it allows you to uh, create a recording. Um, so you can see I can record my audio right now and then stop. And then it creates a sound file uh, that I can then add uh, to my podcast episode over here. And you can see uh, you're able to click uh, click and drag things over or um, upload. Um, so everything that you, again, that you record gets stored in here, but you can also upload uh, other audio files to add to that. Uh, and this has some more, some more bells and whistles such as transitions. So you can, you get access to these little musical interludes and uh in just a second we'll talk about podcast structure and uh, that's a way just to kind of add some a little more uh, higher production value um if you want to you know make it a little more um a little more entertaining um another neat feature is that uh, once you have your podcast up and running it's something that you're able to share uh, and uh, distribute out there, but you also have links where you can invite um, contributors to uh, to leave messages for you. So think of this as kind of a, a, a call-in feature. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to maybe have a part of your podcast be a question of the day or question of the week, um, this could be one way that that people could contribute to that uh, or maybe ask for their commentary on something. And what happens is when they record something, it will appear um, as a file that you can then add uh, to the podcast, you know, as needed. And then as you're done adding your, your recordings, your segments, and then your transitions, uh, you can easily rearrange and build uh, your podcast in here. There's even some, um, during the, um, sorry, uh, within the apps, you also have some, uh, some basic editing capabilities in there as well. And as I mentioned before, Spreaker, uh, I think it's just called Spreaker. It used to be called Spreaker DJ, but uh, that's a similar a similar site. So um, Anchor also will help you uh, put that podcast out on other platforms, the other commercially available ones, such as uh, like Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Uh, will give you um, instructions on how to do that. Um, so let's talk a little bit. Um, of course, if you have any, uh, if you have any questions, feel free please feel free to add them to the chat. Uh, I don't see anything um, right now. So let's see. And so we'll move on here to, uh, to podcast structure. So 
like uh, like anything else, uh, you want to have some kind of planning or some kind of a structure to this. And depending on what your um, what your end result for this is, again, if this is something that you're creating to put content out there, um, you might think of some things differently. Um, as opposed to if this is an assignment that you're giving to your students, um, you might want to have them engage in this planning process, just like if you would with any kind of uh, pre-writing or any kind of um, you know, content or, or anything that they are producing. Uh, so essentially podcasts are, as I mentioned in the beginning, are episodes. Um, so you usually want to have uh, some kind of an introduction. Uh, and here I put W's. So again, your who, what, where, when, why, uh, something to that. Uh, and then uh, usually you can state this maybe a little more in depth in the first episode, um, if this is gonna be something that's, uh, that has multiple episodes. Um, and then you can, you know, you say it in the first episode and you can kind of revisit that, just keeping that, uh, that intent and structure. Um, so you want to also plan what your segments are. So a lot of times, um, if you think about something like a local news show or any kind of news show, um, there are usually different segments. So there's an introduction, there's, you know, a headline, there's, you know, weather, sports, uh, human interest interview. Uh, any of those things are, are great topics for a podcast, depending on what your, uh, what your topic is and what your theme is. Um, that's something that you can have um, a lot of, a lot of fun with. And podcasts, if you if you are new to podcasts and listening to them, and, and one of the tips I mentioned is is uh, just listening to some. Um, it can be anywhere from a single person with single host who's pretty much just there talking uh, about things all the time, uh, or there there can be multiple hosts involved. Sometimes they're they're interview two person interviews. Um, there really is a lot of variety and and uh, once you start listening to a few of them you'll really see like the originality and the creativity come out as uh, as what um, people have done with this um so you also want to as i mentioned with uh, anchor with the the tools in there you want some kind of transition that helps to bridge the the choppiness between your um your segments. Um, it's not necessary. Again, if you're just trying to do this um, in a very basic way to get started, then you really can do all of these things, you know, in one in one recording or in one sitting. You don't have to, you know, have a two and a half hour show uh, with multiple segments. Um, but I think you'll you'll see that uh, when you start out, um, you'll probably start out with. Um, you know, with a few sort of basic things just to, until you get comfortable. But the more you, uh, the more you work on it, the more you do it, um, the more ideas you'll get, you'll see that you're able to expand that um, into a lot more, um, a lot more creative avenues. Um, and then you have your closing, like anything else you want, uh, you want to tie a nice bow on things uh, before you sign off. Uh, maybe just a recap, bringing something full circle, uh, if there's a call to action, um, that's something you want to mention. And then, um, you know, again, you can get creative with this. You can uh, come up with a clever uh, closing line or, um, you know, preview of maybe the next episode, all kinds of things that you can do with that. So uh, let's take a, a look and see if there's any questions here. And I do see one. Uh, what's your thought on starting a podcast with Zoom or YouTube Live as a start? And how would you evolve it from there uh, to make the infrastructure more mature? That's an excellent question. Um, so again, anything that will that you're already using to record um, audio, even if it's included in video, is, is a great place to start. Uh, sometimes, especially with, um, with podcasting that includes uh, interviews or maybe interacting with other people, uh, sometimes it's helpful to have that at least visual um, rapport with someone so you can react to their nuances and their facial expressions and things like that. Uh, one really neat thing that, uh, again, I've used personally is uh, that Zoom, when you record 
from Zoom meetings, um, it will, in the settings, you can have it record a separate audio file. Uh, so you can just take the audio portion of your meeting and upload that. Otherwise, uh, Anchor uh, will take the audio from the the whole um, the whole recording. So it's a video file. Uh, but if you upload that, it will take the audio from that and allow you to add that into the podcast. So um, that's a great question. Okay, so uh, what I would like to do now is um, I'm going to uh, place everyone in breakout rooms for, for just a few minutes, um, about five minutes. And so what I just want you to discuss is just um, a few things about, let's see, and we're not, not sharing my screen here. Sorry about that. Where'd you go? There we go. Uh, so in breakout rooms, you're just going to spend about five minutes um, and just kind of uh, break it down, talk talk to each other about maybe some possible ideas you have for using or creating podcasts, whether it's something that uh, you want to do for yourself or uh, whether it's for students. Uh, and then talk about what barriers or challenges you might foresee uh, either both doing this um, for yourself or with colleagues and using this with students. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let's see. Get two breakout rooms here. And we've got about, let's do about three to four people per room. And so um, this should send you automatically into that. Uh, we'll be in there for about five minutes and then it will, uh, should bring you back out to the main session after that. Uh, so it'll give you about a 30 second break. All right, uh, so we'll go ahead and get that going.
Okay, um, so everyone, welcome back. Um, hopefully, you had uh, you had some good conversations in there. Uh, just quickly, um, we only have a couple of minutes left, um, so I want to make sure that we uh, get some information uh, going. Uh, does anyone just real quick want to uh, give a brief uh, just rundown of maybe some interesting points that you talked about? Feel free to unmute yourself. I'll go ahead, Andy. Uh, this is yeah, Derek yeah, Lee thanks. with um, Pilot City. Just met with um, Corinne Reynoso at L LA County House of Ed in our breakout. Um, awesome. With our podcast, we plan to um, uh, have employers on there and then dive deep with them on their organizations and then have that as recorded content while the students work on projects for the employers uh, so they can win internships uh, thereafter. So we plan using podcasting as a tool for uh, recording asynchronous content that students can digest um, and then you know go into their project developing to win internships and i was the, the one that asked the question about the zoom youtube live and so that that's, seems to be the easiest way for us to get started you know but mm -hmm. over time i think we'd like to mature it and but mature it based on a good infrastructure so your export to audio feature seems to be helpful um love to see how you can get on spotify or get on 
something, you know, like have, have it be more, you know, real and flexible in terms of the, the, the way to do it. And then also making it easier to kind of upload everything at once instead of like having to do all these different logistical items to kind of manage it. Sure, sure. And um, those are those are all great points. Uh, since we are technically at the end of uh, time, I'll just um, I'm just going to fast forward here. Uh, there's my contact information. Um, the daily evaluation uh, for today will be sent at the end. And this is a, a screenshot. I believe you just need to screenshot this for uh, attendance purposes. Um, I will be staying in the room. Um, but uh, so please feel free to uh, to leave as needed. But uh, if you still have some questions or or still uh, you know want to chat a little bit, I'll uh, I'll hang out for a little bit uh, more after that. Um, but I want to thank you all very much for um, for joining us. Um, there are some great questions, and I hope you all uh, feel um, at least somewhat comfortable. Like this is something that you can do. Um, again, there's my contact information. Feel free to reach out. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to talk about any questions, um, any ideas. Uh, again, I, you know, I've, I've been doing this for uh, a while. Um, and someone has to put up their certificate again. Uh, for um, a personal endeavor that, that um, my wife and I are involved in. So um, it's kind of back to what you were saying. Um, there, it's actually pretty easy to 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 get it published on other platforms. Um, when you use Anchor, for example, um, Anchor, in and of itself, is a hosting site. So you get a you get a link um, that you can customize, and people can go straight to Anchor to listen to it. Um, you can also uh, embed uh, the podcast. So if you have a website and you're, you're savvy with the embed code, you can grab that code and, uh, put that into a, um, a, uh, a web page, uh, and it will play in there. Uh, and then also it will, um, allow you to publish to Spotify, uh, from anchor. And then you can also add that to, it's pretty easy to get that through Apple as well. Um, there's just a couple of uh, things you got to do. You have to create an account, um, like a publisher account uh, with Apple. Um, so, so I believe recording has stopped. So again. Uh